How are you today? My name is Jeffrey Swain. I'm the Dean of Campus Ministry here at Florida Memorial University. As Dean of Campus Ministry, I am pastor to the entire campus. Uh, this is my 10th year here at Florida Memorial University, my fifth as Dean of Campus Ministry. And in that role, I serve a lot of functions. One, I officiate at official ceremonies that we have here, like Convocation and Founders Day and Baccalaureate Service, um, other activity, any act, almost any activity that takes place here in the chapel. Uh, we have Sunday worship uh, each week at 11 a.m. Uh, we have Bible study on Tuesday nights. We have a praise and worship time once a month. Uh, I'm here every day for counseling for our students should they need it. I'm here for daily prayer if they need it. I participate in prayer with everyone from the president to faculty members to students and any other person on campus who might need that support. My job is to make this the spiritual center of our university, um, to make uh, faith important on our campus. We try to be interfaith, which means we try to recognize all faiths, um, and we try to be ecumenical, which is there are a lot of different versions of the Christian faith that we interface with. We have Catholic students here as well as Lutheran students and folk from a whole host of other Christian denominations, but our goal is to be spiritually supportive of all members of our campus community. The chapel is located directly across from the front gate of the university. Um, it's strangely, it sits outside the campus proper, but I think that's a good thing in a way in that it makes it a part of the community because we really want the chapel not just to be for the university uh, family, but we want it to be a part of the community. One of the things that I've been trying to do since I've been here is to reconnect the chapel to the community. Uh, we want people who live around here uh, to think it's their church. Uh, we want it to be connected to other churches in the community. Um, we want to be connected to social justice things that are happening in the community. Um, I feel that as a university chapel, we have sort of a different role than the average church. Our job is to in part be a spokesperson for the culture and for the faith uh, traditions that we have. And our goal is to help people to understand that even in the 21st century, Faith is still important. Um, your belief in God is still important. Uh, your Christian walk is still important. And it's a part of your holistic development as a student or as a person who works here. Our services happen every Sunday at 11 and we specifically hold them for one hour. Um, of course, since a large part of our student population uh, attends, since a large part of our population are students, we try to be cognizant of their time. And also as a person who grew up in the Baptist church, um, who went to church for three hours on Sunday, I, I, I think we can be more economical about how we use people's time. And if we bring them here, there's a central purpose when we come here. The purpose is to give them God's word. It's not to put on a show or to perform. It's to try to help them to understand um, that your constant development of your faith perspective is important to your, to your life. Uh, we live in a very complex society. There are a lot of demands on people. Uh, often a lot of confusion and frustration and depression happens out of the culture in which we live. Uh, but we try to help people to stay centered and we try to help them to stay calm and we help, try to help them get them to use their faith as a barometer for keeping their lives going in the right direction. That's a very good question because all, all universities don't have chapels, but uh, chapels are a part of the faith tradition of many HBCUs. Many of the HBCUs that we know of were started by um, various denominations, the Methodist Church, uh, the Baptist Church, um, and all of us generally are connected in that way. So the, the, having a church on campus became a vital part of it because they wanted the students originally, uh, not just to be students, but to also be people of faith. Uh, as the chapel has evolved on different campuses, as I said, you know, it, it's more than just the focus on that particular faith. I mean, we have students from Africa, we have students from Latin America, we have students from Europe. 
and all of them bring, bring different faith traditions and not all of them are Christian traditions. We have uh, Muslim students here and we're working to try to, to create places of, of, of prayer and worship for them as well. Uh, but the building belongs to our students. Uh, I try to get them to understand that you don't have to be a Christian to use this building. Uh, our goal is to make this the center of spiritual uh, self-worth on the campus, I suppose. And the building can be used by anyone. Uh, people think because we, it's called a chapel that, that it's not available to everyone, but the truth is it is available to any student of any faith who wants to use it for a spiritual or religious purpose. Well, the goal is to make it personal. Um, faith can't be, can't be a cookie cutter process. It has to be a process by which each, each person comes to a point of self-revelation where they believe that faith is important in their lives. You know, in my own case, you know, when I was very young at 17, uh, you know, faith was, was my choice. Um, when I joined a college or when I went to college, I joined a church there. I was able to be with that same church all four years, it, and it was a place for me to grow. It, it was also a place to socialize. It was also a place to uh, make connections for the future. And, and people tend to think of, of church in sort of an old traditional way, uh, but, 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 but worship has changed. Um, here for example, I'm not the only person who may speak. We like to bring in guests from the outside. Uh, particularly, you know, you know, those who are who are younger and in, more innovative in their thinking. I want our students to to be guest speakers at times uh, because it's good for them to hear the voices of their peers who are are centered in their faith and they want to grow in Christ or in in their faith experience. Um, I also want them to be leaders in, in our in our worship setting. Um, as I as I've pointed out. You know, we have student worship leaders, we have student praise team leaders, we have students dance, liturgical dance leaders, we have students who serve as greeters. Uh, I literally try to let them take over the service on Sunday so that they can be fully involved and engaged. Uh, my job is to preach the word, of course, uh, but as often as possible, I want to encourage them to also speak to their peers. And, and it's not necessarily that they have to do a sermon, but as people of faith, they can share their beliefs, they can share things that the Lord has done for them. They can share the importance of faith as they walk through their college experience, experiences. Um, they can show that they're growing. College is a time of total transformation. You change intellectually, you change spiritually, you change socially, you physically grow up into manhood and womanhood. And, and there's a wonderful scripture that I like to quote to our students out of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It says, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I thought as a child, I understood as a child. But when I became a man, woman, I put away childish things. It is a growth process. And so not only are they growing academically, not only are they growing socially and understanding how to interface with people, interface, interface with people, but they're also learning how, how to, to solve problems spiritually and to to understand uh, that the world is not perfect, um, that you are not gonna have to make the decisions that determine what happens next in your life. And it's always good when you have sort of a spiritual background, uh, a prayer is an essential part of your, your development, reading the word, whatever your faith tradition is. There's always a scriptural uh, aspect to it. And we wanna just get students attuned to the idea of giving some time to their faith on a daily basis. Uh, one of the things I, I, I say to students constantly is, you know, when phone telephones first came out, uh, they used to give you 1,500 minutes a month, which I think equates to about 25 hours or 28 hours or something like that. And I often ask them, when was the last time you gave your faith 28 hours in a month? Um, and if you think about it, that's not a great deal of time. But if you prayed that much or if you read your word that much or if you came to worship, if you integrated all of those things, um, you can give time to your, to your spiritual growth. And that's what I want our students to understand, that my job is to help them grow, not to mandate anything for them. I don't try to twist students' arms uh, into being people of faith. I want, them to under, I want them to see the value of it. And sometimes that come through Christ, comes through crises that they go through. Uh, we have students who lose parents, lose uh, brothers and sisters while they're in school. Um, they go through their 
bouts of depression and, and, and excitement. Um, they're going through social relationships that work and don't work. And all of those uh, bring them to different moments in their lives. And the goal is to get them to understand that they should not necessarily panic, but they have a, a support system through their faith to help them get through all of those experiences, which is what life is about on a daily basis. Every single day, you're gonna be challenged about something. Every single day, uh, there's going to be a, something that you have to con deal with, contest with, struggle with, or just be happy about. And, and in all those experiences, you need a certain balance to life. And that's what faith brings.